All right, everybody. So today we're going to code our own basic version of MS Paint. And some of you might be joining this video for the first time. This is the final part in my intro to coding series. So if you need more of an introduction, you could go back. If you already have some proficiency in Java, this is actually a pretty straightforward project. Um, I'm not even going to do an object-oriented style. I'm going to keep it very basic. I'll introduce object-oriented style programming in a later tutorial. But yeah, this is it. We're going to make our own paintbrush program. And for those of you who have been following the full tutorial series, you actually already know enough to do it. What you might be lacking is some basic um, problem-solving skills in coding. And that's all right. That's part of what you're here to learn. And I can't emphasize this enough. Being a good coder is about solving original and unique problems. That's how you become a good coder. And you might come up with an entirely unique way to solve a problem that's existed for years. Uh, maybe a more efficient way or a better way. I'm not sure. But um, hang around. This is, this is a cool one. See you in a moment. All right, the first thing I want to teach you all today in prep for making this MS Paint is how to create a button. And a button in the programming sense of the word means when you click a particular portion of the screen, it saves the state and uses that state change, you know, stores that information in a variable to achieve a different effect. In this case, depending on which quadrant I click, I make a ellipse that gets bigger or smaller. And so for some of you who might have a guess of how to do this, I would recommend you just code your own way of doing it right now. And then uh, I'm gonna just go through the answer, uh, well, right now, right away. And this is all in prep of making your own paint program. So we're on, this is step six, actually video seven. So let's call this uh, 7A button. Now. Um, you notice that I made an ellipse that's going to be changing its size. So I need to make a variable to store the size of that ellipse. So I'm going to make float r for the radius of the ellipse. I'm going to make a canvas and I will do it of size, typical size. Let's go 800 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. And yay, goody. Okay. White background, so we're going to go into our void draw uber function and we're going to go background 255 for a white background. Um, we're going to fill the ellipse with black and uh, let's draw some lines to break our canvas into quadrants. So we're going to draw a line if you guys remember that, and that's going to be zero height divided by two. So it's beginning at all the way at the left at zero, the height is begins halfway the height of the screen. It's going to span the entire width of the canvas. So let's go from zero to width. And then it's going to stay at the same height, which is going to draw, I'll just show this real quick. It's going to draw a horizontal line across the screen. So now let's draw a vertical line. So that's going to be line. And we're going to begin it, uh, let's see, in the middle of the screen. So that's width divided by two, begins at the top, stays in the middle of the screen. Don't know why I can't type with, never could. And it's going to go all the way to the bottom. And there you are. I've separated the thing into quadrants. Now, the effect we're trying to achieve is, depending on where I click, I change the size of an ellipse. So what I'm actually doing is, depending on where I click, I'm changing the state of a variable. And then I automatically apply that variable in my ellipse, if that makes sense. So let's show you what I mean. So I'm going to say, if you press the mouse button, if mouse pressed, and now we're going to restrict it to a certain vicinity of the screen. I'm going to say, if you press the mouse and the X coordinate of the mouse is on the left half of the screen, right? So if I press the mouse, and it's on the left half of the screen. And let's put it on the top half of the screen of the, as well. So, and mouse y is less than height divided by two. 
So I'm saying if I press a mouse and it's on the left side of the screen and it's on the top, the left half of the screen and it's on the top half of the screen, which means I'm in the top left, I'm in the left quadrant, right? Let's do the following. We're going to change our variable, change our variable r to 100. Now, let's do something with that variable. Let's just draw an ellipse with it. And I'm going to put that up here. I'm going to make an ellipse, and I'm going to put it right in the center, width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And I'll go radius times 2, and radius times 2. Boom. Let's do this. So, nothing shows up. I click here. Boom. I draw an ellipse of radius 100. Let me rerun it. Notice if I don't click in that quadrant, no ellipse shall appear. Why? Because the radius variable by default is set to its value up here. It's initialized to the value of zero. So it is drawing an ellipse right now. It's just that ellipse has a radius of zero, so it's not existent. Well, yeah, it's not existent, uh, but it is existing just with a radius of zero. Okay, so, but now once I click, the radius becomes zero, and there it is. And of course, nothing is going to override it in these other quadrants. Now, here is an okay time and place to use copy pasta. So I'm going to control C all of this, hit enter, control V, or command if you're on the apples. Um, so let's put, let's go on the top right quadrant. So all I got to do is flip this guy, right? All I got to do is flip that guy. And let's change the radius to, say, 200. So now I'm saying, hey, if I'm on the right half of the screen and the top half of the screen, make the radius 200. So let's do that. Boom, 200. Yay, if I click here, boom, 100. See that? And I think you guys get the ideas, you guys and gals. So let's copy pasta again, and then I'll copy pasta again. I'm going to control T because you line up your stuff, make it neat. Otherwise, it's a no good. Um, so now I'm going to say if you're on the left half of the screen and the bottom half of the screen, let's make the radius 300. And I should say if you're on the right half of the screen, maybe that's what I said. I don't know what I said. All right, if you're on the right half of the screen, and, uh, oh, no, 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 wait. Yep, I said it right the first time. If you're on the left half of the screen and the bottom half, make the radius 300. If you're on the right half of the screen and the bottom half of the screen, make the radius 400. Let's see if I did that right. Uh, no, no, I did not. All right, let's check that. Mm-hmm. Ah, boom. There it is, I believe. I don't know. Let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Yay! Okay, I got it. Okay. Told you, pixel locations get you. It's all right if you stare at these functions in their fat, stupid faces over and over until you get it. It's just, just the way it is. Um, you've got to understand. You have to be spatially oriented to make sense of this. Okay, so that was our first intro um, on how to make a button. Notice I didn't go into too much detail because I want you all to solve this for yourselves. You'll learn more. And now the next thing is I'm going to show you a bit about how do you want to limit the value of a thing. So you only want to do things in a certain value range. Let me show you what that means. And guess what I remember to do? File, save. Yay! Okay, next part. All right, second and last assignment before you make your MS Paint. So what I've done is I've just made a simple background. And when I hit the W key, it gets progressively whiter. But notice it doesn't get all the way white. In fact, it only gets halfway there. So when I hit the W key, it gets progressively whiter, stopping at halfway. And when I hit the S key or down, it gets progressively blacker. And so I've limited how far white or black this can get by constraining by variables. So pretty straightforward. And again, you need this concept in order to make the MS Paint version we're going to make. So let's do this. So we saved already. So I'll go file, save as. I'll call this 7B. 
Uh, I'll call this constraining variables. Seven B constraining variables. Yay! Okay, so I'm gonna make uh, a variable called white or white whiteness ity whitenessity. Its ability to be white. Okay, so we got whitenessity as a variable. Uh, and let's just get rid of all this stuff, y'all. Say goodbye. Now, I'm gonna change the background according to the whitenessity value. Okay, now, um, so what do we do? We're gonna operate on that whitenessity value depending on the key press and for how long we press it for. So we're gonna say, if key press it and the key is equal to, remember this is how you put a key input um, in a set of single parentheses or single quotation marks. If the key is W, and here's the other important thing, and eh, if you press a key and that key is W, and the whitenessity is less than or equal to 128. So if I press a W key, let's do the following. White Whitenessity plus equal one. Whitenessity plus equal one. And then similarly, let's use some copy pasta. Control C, Control V, Control T. Uh, and I'm gonna do if it's W and S to make it smaller. And if it's greater than or equal to zero, let's subtract one from the value. So I'll run this and describe it as we go. Run, there you go. Now, so if I press the W key and the value is less than 128, so if I hit the W key and I hold it, the white value, this function will continue to execute. This function here, whitenessity plus equal one, will continue to execute until the value becomes 128 now this conditional is no longer true. This conditional cannot execute because we have a value that is 129, right? So this conditional can no longer be true. This conditional can only execute if the whitenessity value is less than or equal to 128. So I cannot execute this function and vice versa for this. So what I'm doing is I'm limiting how, when I can run this function. So, just a simple idea. There's other ways to achieve this. I know there's some sweaty programmers out there that are all like, I don't like the way he's doing this. This is, I, I get it, you know, but this is very basics. And I wanna just do things with the basic tools that I have given you. And this always bothers me in many math and physics classes and every, every other class I've tutored. When I see kids, they're given homework, that has nothing to do with the lecture they're just given. It's completely unfair. As a good teacher, you should always give your kids or your students the necessary tools to solve the problems in front of them. Then if you're not, it's your fault as the teacher, right? I want to give you all complicated problems to solve that are fair based off the tools I have shown you. And so solve it in these ways. Okay, so you are pretty ready to do this now. So, oh, file save, I remembered. Oh, I remembered. Oh, okay, so um, here's what you need to do. Now, this is gonna be a bit of a stretch, but I promise you I've given you every tool necessary to accomplish this. You're gonna make a basic paintbrush program. So when I click in here, I change the color of my brush and I can write with it. Don't worry about the smoothness of it. I'm just going super basic for now. You can change all this in the future. I'm just making as basic of a paint pro program as possible. There's so many ways to clean this up and make it better. So I click here and now it's an orange brush. If I hold W, my brush gets bigger to a point. Notice I've limited how big my brush can get. Ooh, it's like I did this intentionally. And so if I hit S, it becomes smaller to a point. And now I've changed to a blue, a very small blue brush. Blah, blah, blah. There you go. Blue smiley face. Let's make a happy little eraser here. And there you go. So, as I've always said in the past, do your best 
to try this out on your own. Struggle with it, right? Make this program happen. You have as many tools as you want. I'd say you pause the video or even stop the video and really go at this. This is your final exam for this tutorial series. Um, and try to make this work. You might come up with a different way than I've come up with. That's totally cool, that's great. Um, I've designed this assignment three or four times now for different classes. I do it a different way each time. I came up with a different way. You notice when I started this tutorial series, I did it different than I'm showing it now. I put this fancy paintbrush size indicator because this is a fair thing to ask. So y'all are capable of this. Um, I'd recommend go back, watch old videos and go from there. And uh, that's it. Good luck to you. And I'll go over the answer shortly. All right, let's do this. Let's code this out. Um, I'm going to save it as, I'll call this 7C, and I'm going to call it Sam's Paint with a capital MS. And I'm calling that because my student Sam came up with this idea years ago in class when we were working with these concepts, and I thought it was brilliant. And uh, yeah, I think it's a very fun project, and I want to honor him, Sam MS Paint. And one of my students came up with the clever titling too. Smart kids. Okay, first of all, we know we need to make a brush that's gonna change its values of red, green, and blue. So let's do that. So we're gonna make red and green, red, green, and blue variables that we will alter depending on where we click the screen. And let's make a canvas of size 800 by 800. And I'm going to make the background white right away, and you should know why, but basically it's because, um, well, I don't want the background refreshing when I paint, right? Because otherwise the background's going to wipe itself clean. So that we don't want. We want to change the background white at the void setup loop permanently. Now we're going to go void draw, and then now we're going to start applying, um, let's draw a red rectangle to start. So we're going to make the fill of the rectangle, 255.00. And by the way, um, I might have brought this up in a prior, but I'm gonna make a comment here to keep track of my stuff. This is gonna be the red, um, red bucket, red paint bucket. So the red bucket, fill a 255.00. And <clears throat> now let's draw a rectangle there. So I want it at 50 pixels. It, the corners are gonna begin at 50.50. And uh, let's make it 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. So I should have made, there we go, a red rectangle in the top left corner. Now, we want to interact with this red rectangle. So I'm going to make a, a hitbox that corresponds to only the vicinity of the red rectangle. All right? So I need to say, if the mouse is pressed, and the mouse X position is greater than 50 because we're beginning the rectangle at 50, right? And it's got a width of 50 pixels, which means it's gonna begin at 50 pixels to the left or to the right and end at 100 pixels or 50 plus 50 to the right. So if mouse press and mouse X is less than 50 and mouse X is greater than 150 rather, and less than 100. So if it's between 100 and 50 pixels, we'll do a thing. And let's do the same thing for the Y. And mouse Y is greater than 50. And mouse Y is less than 100. All right, let's do the following. So set of braces here, we're containing our block of code, well, just one line of code, well, actually three lines. We're gonna set the red value to 255, the green value to zero, and the blue value to zero. So if we press our mouse button between 50 and 100 pixels in the X direction and 50 and 100 pixels in the Y direction, we're gonna change the red value to 255. Now, all we've done is change the value, right? But I'm not doing anything with that value yet. I've just said, hey, if I click in this vicinity, make 
the red value 255. So let's paint with it. So we should make an ellipse that is corresponding to your mouse X and mouse Y location. And um, let's give it a diameter of D. So notice I've used, I'm using a variable I haven't created yet, so let's make that variable up here. And I'm going to give it a default value of 25 pixels from the get-go. And so I'm going to fill that ellipse with the red, green, and blue values that I've created. So let's watch this. We should get some bugs here. So look, it's painting by, deep, by default, right? Because I never told it to not paint by default, just always drawing an ellipse based off of the red, green, and blue values, which by default, when we've initialized our variables, remember, if you don't give a variable a value, it is automatically given the value of zero. So right now, I am just painting with zeros for my red, green, and blue. And if I click here, ah, so look, I've changed it, right? I'm painting with it, but I'm not painting conditionally. So we only want to paint, we're going to say, if mouse pressed. And I don't want to paint in the vicinity of where my palette menu is located. So I'm going to say if mouse pressed and the mouse Y is below our menu bar up top. So if I press my mouse button and I'm below my menu bar, let's paint. Control T. So again, note how I'm stacking my braces. Let's go. So Ah, good. I'm not painting automatically. If I press a button, ah, mouse Y is less than. I did it backwards. We should say greater than 100. There we go. So look, I'm painting and I'm not painting up here because I'm pressing my mouse button, but mouse Y is not below 100 or greater than 100 rather, right? Now let me click here. And yay, goody, I've dyed my paintbrush, but we have this issue where I'm leaving um, the outline, so we need to get rid of that outline. So we're just going to say no stroke when we do that. So now I click. Ah, goody. But notice there's one little problem. Notice that the stroke around my paint palette, my paint swath, I don't know what you call that, my paint my paint button has disappeared, like the, the black outline is gone. See, I was there, now I click, it disappears. Well, because once I execute this conditional, no stroke applies across the board. So let's bring the stroke back up here. And I'll make it a little bit of a thicker border, stroke two. Click, there it is. So stroke remains, even though I click. And you can already see where I'm going with this. So let's kind of stick this all together. Uh, looking pretty good. And so I'm just going to make a green bucket. So we're going to go Control C, boom, boom, Control V. And I'll Control T to line it up. Now we'll make a green bucket. You can do all the other colors yourself. These are just simple RGB values to make, like blue or uh, orange and yellow. Those are easy things to look up, so I won't get into that level of detail. But now let's make a green bucket. So the green is going to be 0 on the red, 255 here. But now <clears throat> I need to change the location. So again, this pixel location stuff is a little bit... Um, this is going to probably make some logical contradictions because I'm drawing my green bucket right now on top of my red bucket. And that's fine. So. Remember, the red bucket went from, my red button, maybe is a better word, is existing here from between 50 and 100 pixels. So I need to begin my green rectangle here at 150 pixels and end at 200. So I'm just going to plop a 1 in there and put a 2 here. And I actually don't need to mess with the Y values at all. But I do need to change these values here. Because... When I click in this vicinity, so let me just illustrate it here. Ah, uh, it's still not working. Why? What did I do wrong here? Oh, I changed my hitbox of where I'm interacting with the green bucket, but I haven't changed the location of the green bucket itself. So it's beginning at 150 pixels and ending... Um, oh, no, I don't need to change this. It's so just beginning at 150 pixels 
and it's 50 pixels wide. Let's see if this is right. There we go. So let's see if I'm working. Uh, click here and I can paint with red. Click here, paint with green. And there you go. Now I want you to add the remaining colors. So right now we have red and green. And so what I want you to do is just add the remaining colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and just one version of violet. You don't need indigo and violet. And then an eraser, a white eraser. And so just practice that real quick with copy paste. And I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I'll just go over the answer because I think it's pretty straightforward. I'm back. So um, again, I've added my other colors here and yay. Uh, they all show up. So I've got my red, paints with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple hearts, green clovers, blue moons. You get my point. So we're painting. Now, here's the next assignment for you. I want you to make, as I discussed in the original assignment, um, make the brush size increase to, let's say, a maximum of 50 pixels and get to at smallest, let's say, five pixels and make it so that your brush gradually increases in size. And let's say W makes your brush get bigger and S makes your brush smaller. So go ahead and do that as a quick assignment and I'll go over the answer shortly. All right, let's code this. So what we wanna do is make our brush size bigger uh, depending on if we press, we'll make it bigger if we press the W key. So we're gonna say if key pressed and key equals W. Now we wanna set a restriction on it. We don't want the brush to keep increasing once the diameter is greater than 50. So I'm gonna say, if we press the W key and the diameter is less than 50. So if these conditions are true, let's do the following. Let's make D plus equal 0.5, right? And so by the way, notice I'm increasing it gradually, a half increment at a time, which is gonna make my brush expand, well, half as slow as if it was a D is equal to one. And let's just do some quick copy pasta. Control C, Control V, and we're gonna go like this. W makes it bigger, S makes it smaller. And I'm gonna run this as long as D is greater than zero and then I'm gonna subtract D from it. So let me run this and let me show you what's going on. So oh, mess it up. So I click this, I'm drawing. I hit W, make it a little bit bigger, hold W all day and I'm holding W, holding W and it's never gonna get bigger than this because I've limited. I can no longer execute D plus equals 0.5 if D is, you know, D has to be less than 50 in order for this function to execute. And likewise, if I hold S, I can make my brush smaller and smaller until it's only five pixels big, which is kind of cool. It's got like a uh, little bit of a transparency effect, but that's just because it's so small. And, um, oh, I didn't limit it. Let's limit it to five. Here, let's limit it to five. That's why it's so small. Run it one more time. So there it is, make it bigger and make it all the way smaller. There you go, that's a five pixel big brush. That makes more sense. Okay, last thing, two things. I want you to display the size of your paintbrush right here, you know, like a, an ellipse that gets bigger or smaller that shows you how big your brush is. And I want you to do one thing. I want you to clear the entire screen um, if you press the space bar. So it's wiping your slate clean. So last two things, again, Think about this. Oh, and by the way, um, notice that I'm teaching you, I've already discussed this, but for those of you new folks here, you should code a program like kind of like one level of functionality at a time. This gets a little bit easier when you get more into object-oriented programming, but you, you should always do this. Get like one level of function working and then add your layers of complexity. Don't try to code the whole thing from scratch. That's a no good, okay? So again, uh, show, make a little function that shows the brush size increase and decrease over here. And uh, when you press the space bar, the entire slate gets wiped clean, giving you a blank canvas. All right, last step. So let's code in that functionality to display how big or small our brush is. 
So this is decently straightforward, I think. What we need to do is fill an ellipse with the existing red, green, and blue colors that we've defined. So we're gonna fill the ellipse with red, green, and blue, and we're just gonna fill an ellipse with it. Now, the only thing that's a little bit difficult is where we locate that ellipse. I'm gonna center it, because remember, you draw an ellipse according to the location of its center. So 750 pixels to the right, which is its center. 75 pixels down for the center of the ellipse, and I'm gonna give it a diameter of D, which will display its diameter, right? So let's run this, I'll change it to red. Yay, changes colors. Notice we got a, a outline, we can change that. So look, yay, got bigger, but watch what happens if I shrink it smaller. The old ellipses remain, right? Because I'm never wiping this area clean, right? So if I draw an ellipse, there's nothing that's wiping away the previous ellipses I drew. So let's change that real quick. So first of all, let's go with no stroke to get rid of the black background. Let's run that and change it to green. So again, I make my green ellipse bigger and bigger and bigger, but I'm making it smaller here, but it doesn't show up smaller here because it is technically drawing a smaller ellipse, but it's drawing it on top of this green ellipse that's already there, so you never see it. So what we need to do then is draw a rectangle there as well. And locating the rectangles a little weird, but let's draw that first. So I'm gonna put a rectangle and that needs to be located 725 pixels to the right, 50 pixels down from the top with a width and a height of 50-50. All right, let's watch this. Let's run this. So now we're wiping it clean, but notice that this rectangle by default has a stroke around it. So I need to, no stroke. I mean, the order, you could do this with less no stroke functions if you stack them right, but whatever, let's keep it simple. There you go. So now we could see it increasing or decreasing in size. Ah, notice that an entire um, box shows up when I click, right? And the reason is, well, let me think about that. When I click, it's getting a fill. Ah, I need to make the fill of the rectangle just 255 because it's gonna fill it with the colors I'm giving it by default. Click here, there we go. Hope that made sense, because what was happening is that fill was automatically filling it with something other than white. All right, last thing. So let's go with blue, there we go, make it bigger, smaller. I said, when we click the space bar, let's wipe the canvas entirely clean. That's pretty straightforward. We're gonna say, if key pressed and key equals space. And again, to do a space, you just literally hit the space bar between a set of single parentheses or single quotation marks. We're just gonna say background 255, wiping the entire thing clean. Let's try it out. So I'm painting, I'm painting, make my brush bigger, hit space bar, boom, the thing wipes clean. Woo! Okay, that's it. Um, again, for those of you who have made it through all of this, congrats. Um, I'm seriously like happy for you. I love teaching. I love it. It's so much fun. Um, if you've stuck it out and made it all the way to the end, super congrats to you. Or if you just picked this up and just wanted to do this tutorial by itself, good on you as well. It's a decent amount. Um, I love this project because it's very good at producing something pretty cool, something like a basic version of MS Paint, um, using some simple functionality. And um, this is great. So this is the end of this tutorial. The next tutorial I'm gonna give is how to create Pong. I won't do it object-oriented, I'll do that in the future. So I'm gonna create a basic Pong, and then we're gonna create Pong using sprites. And that'll look really cool. I'm gonna use like these custom Dragon Ball sprites. I'm gonna have Goku and Vegeta going at it, and they're gonna be creating, uh, making random sounds each time it makes contact. You'll see it'll look really cool. So do that subscribe stuff. Um, and uh, again, I'll plug the book one more time. I made a basic book on uh, this whole thing. It's gonna be sold on my website at thethinkerteacher.com. 
Um, it's going to go over the same stuff, but in book form and in a little bit more detail. And that's the first book on coding I'm writing. Um, and I'm going to write other ones, but I'm just going to release little books at a time that you can download. Maybe I'll put it on Amazon too. I don't know yet. I'm still, I'm still working all that out. All right. Congrats, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>